Okay, this, <clears throat> this video is Michael Brownlee's paper on diabetes, the unifying theory of complications of diabetes. This is a major AO, academic orgasm. This is one of the most beautiful papers I've ever read in my life. It's a work of genius. This guy's an absolute genius. He deserves a Nobel Prize. He'll never get it because they don't want the people, the public, to know about this paper. Um, and the bottom line, what was the main finding? The main finding was that excessive dietary fat will cause reversal of electron transport in mitochondria like at complex three and then you'll get the electrons being dropped off the electron transport chain they'll drop onto oxygen and they'll produce a superoxide the point of all this is that the main cause of insulin resistance and diabetes is due to excessive dietary fat so the smart thing to do for a diabetic type 2 diabetic is to eat a low fat plant-based diet okay it's obvious once you understand this and the paper is so brilliant because he confirmed this in so many different ways he just made it you know real solid okay um i'll show you in a moment the, at what happens at pubmed they don't even show you the paper or the abstract um, but if you go to diabetesjournals.org uh you can get the paper i'll show you on the next slide the paper itself Okay, and um, it's just fat in general, but sat fat in particular. And I think it's because the lack of double bonds creates an additional <clears throat> FADH in the process of beta oxidation, leading to more electrons quickly being sent to the electron transport chain and overwhelming it. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's sometimes referred to as overnutrition. Once you back up electron transport in the mitochondria, you will then cause a backup, like a traffic jam in the tricarboxylic acid cycle, also known as Krebs cycle, and you cause a backup of glycolysis. I'm going to get into a little technical detail here. You don't need to know the details, but just when you read the paper, if I tell you this, it'll, you'll, you'll understand the paper faster. The superoxide anions can lead to complications from free radicals. ROS is reactive oxygen species if, uh, again, the mitochondria is overwhelmed. And they're not able to neutralize these free radicals rapidly enough, okay? And then you can get uh, DNA damage in the mitochondria. You can get DNA damage in the nucleus. And you'll activate something called PARP. It's like the polyadenosine uh, protein for DNA repair. And that actually goes to the glycolysis cycle in the cytoplasm and will inhibit 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde dehydrogenase. And that will then divert it, 3-PGA, into MGO, methylglyoxal. So I know I'm getting to a whole bunch of technical stuff, but the reason I'm doing this is because this is how diabetes becomes a metabolic disaster. The methylglyoxal uh, side product, side reaction from glycolysis produces advanced glycation end products. And they can exit the cell and go around glycating things all over the place, and you get all these metabolic disasters and diabetes. Diabetes is a disaster. The average ignorant patient always says, it's in control, it's under control, I'm taking my pills. They don't understand. It's not under control. <laughs> um, the smart move is lower your fat intake, okay? And this is not known. You'll go to fellowship-trained endocrinologists at the biggest-name universities, and they won't know this because I talked to a bunch of them. And the ones I talked to, none of them had even read this paper. None of them knew about this paper. None of them knew about the other major papers in diabetes. None of them knew about the low-fat diet. It's amazing how little they know. Amazing, literally. All they know is the drugs. And when you read, you know, all the medical student books, residency books, they're always going to be a big picture of, you know, Banting and Best, the discoverers of insulin, because it's a drug. But the guy who actually figured out what happens in the disease, no one's ever heard of him. Okay, what else? Um, then the thing that happens is because you have insulin resistance in the skeletal muscle cells, normally after you eat, that's called postprandial, after eating, most of your glucose, the majority of it, should be taken up into the skeletal muscle cells and stored as glycogen. However, when the skeletal muscle cells are, are insulin resistant, they don't take up that glucose. So then a lot of it, you know, gets stuck in the blood. You have postprandial after eating hyperglycemia, high blood glucose. And some of that excess blood glucose will go to the liver and the liver progressively becomes fatty. And I talked about that with my previous uh, references, two recent lectures. I'm kind of giving you all the diabetes lectures here, all three in a row together. Um, you'll get a fatty liver from that excess glucose. But here's another bigger problem. The high blood glucose will then go to cells which cannot control the rate of uptake. The skeletal muscle is sort of like perfectly designed to just take up extra glucose after you eat to store it as glycogen. The muscle is like the biggest organ in the body, skeletal muscle. Okay, but the point is there's other cells in the body like your endothelial cells, I abbreviated here, ECs. They take up glucose at a rate proportional to whatever the blood glucose level is. 
That's why if you have prolonged hyper elevation of your blood glucose, hyperglycemia, those cells take up too much glucose. And the same process, you can call it overnutrition, overwhelming the mitochondria electron transport chain. This is located on the inner mitochondrial membrane. If you too rapidly send electrons to it, it gets overwhelmed and it starts to back up and go backwards and then you produce these side reaction products, reactive oxygen species like superoxide anions and those can get made into you know, hydrogen peroxide and if you can't um, detoxify that, like with catalase, then that'll get made potentially into hydroxyl radicals which are uh, quite hyperreactive and can damage the mitochondrial membrane. So that the cells that can't control their uptake of glucose in the setting of hyperglycemia include the endothelial cells, so you get what's called the microvascularopathy, a disaster. That's why diabetics get their foot amputated all the time. It's in the small vessels of the foot. There's nothing to bypass too distally. It's too small the angioplasty. It happens in the eye, diabetic retinopathy. It happens in the kidneys, diabetic nephropathy. It happens in the peripheral nerves, diabetic neuropathy. Um, you get a there's slightly more complicated mechanism of injury to brain cells, but you get insulin resistance in brain cells as well, and that causes cognitive decline. I've given I've given a whole bunch of much more detailed lectures about this. If you want, just go to the playlist for diabetes. You'll find all these lectures. Um, but it, it's a real disaster. So you get insulin resistance in brain cells because everyone says they only have GLUT3 transporters, which take up all the glucose. That's not true. They also have in the hippocampus and some other locations glucose type 4 transporters, like in the skeletal muscle, are insulin dependent. So that's a big disaster. Plus, there's something called, I go through all this in my other lectures, but mitochondria associated membranes, MAMs, that couple the glucose intake to calcium being sent into the mitochondria to quickly upregulate the mitochondrial Krebs cycle enzymes in the setting of, you know, an acute event when the person needs to function more rapidly and intensely. So that's why diabetics can't handle intellectual stress very well. I give entire other lectures about that, so I don't want to get into all that. I'm just sort of, you know, giving you the like the, the trailer to the movie, okay? All right, so here's something I want to show you because this will help you understand how stuff really works in the real world. If you go to PubMed, you know, PubMed right here, and that's where you, people look for most research papers. They will not show you this paper. They'll show you the title of the paper. They'll show you Michael Brownlee's name. Look at this. No abstract. They not only don't show you the paper, they won't even show you the abstract, okay? That's BS, all right? <laughs> so think about that. Like, just about the most important disease, and it's been figured out, and no one's allowed to know about it, okay? Because they don't want you to know about it. If you, know, you eat low-fat diet, you, they're not going to make money off you. Okay, so PubMed is no abstract. However, surprisingly, the, full, the entire paper is available free if you just go to this, uh, this website, diabetesjournals.org. And here's the paper. The Pathobiology of Diabetic Complications, a Unifying Mechanism by Michael Brownlee. And he won the Banting Lecture Award in 2004 as the best diabetes researcher in the entire world. And I'm telling you, this guy is a super genius. I, I almost wanted to cry when I read this paper. It was so intellectually beautiful. It was just awesome. Um, and then he, he gave the diabetes lecture in uh, 2005 with the American Diabetic Association. You have to log into their site, the American uh, Diabetes Association. I think it's diabetes.org. You have to log into their site and they will let you watch his lecture of this. So if you want, you can watch his lecture. I can also tell you, I've made multiple lectures on diabetes and I explain it in much more detail. So if you want to watch my lectures about it, I, I, I'll go in this in much more detail in all, my, in all my lectures. You know, you go to my playlist on diabetes if you want, if you want to understand this. Uh, so anyways, I thought this was beautiful. I thought it was useful. So there it is.